my name is Vic Chapman and I'm talking to uh, Jessica Belger about uh, her educational journey. What moments have been significant to you in your educational journey and, and why? I think it's people, it's always been people. Um, I set out to do visual arts and education at uni from the limited perspective of going to a small country town high school and I had a bit of a knack for drawing. I liked, I'm happiest when I'm making something and I had a really, I had some really amazing teachers myself, particularly my art teacher. And I saw that the kids that had the things at school that I didn't, like the money for the excursions and the fancier bikes and all of that, their parents were teachers. So from that perspective, I thought, right, that's a way to have a, um, a stable career. And I ended up at COFA doing the Bachelor of Art Education because those two things went together. Um, so yeah, and one of those key moments is, is the people along the way that inspire you. Um, and certainly getting to COFA and having the support networks, having academics that, um, that got it and that were willing to work with somebody that was from a really, um, or that was really frightened, I suppose. Because the community aspect is important. So many of our, and it's not to say that all Indigenous students that come to university are the same, because they're certainly not. Some are from, some have grown up in the city, some have grown up with wealthy parents, and some are at the opposite end of the scale. So it's not that they're all the same and they, have, they all um, have the same needs, but what the support units do is create a place where you can be part of that community if you want to. And that I've had some really positive experiences uh, using them and also working for one. I find if I don't go home for a couple of months I start to not be feeling right. I think every time I go home it sort of recharges the batteries, you get to see who's proud of you, you get to see what, particularly when I was studying and finding it hard that um, having having people at home that were sort of that were gunning for you to do something big and make a difference and, and do something that just have choices, that's all it is. It's not that I've changed the world, it's just that I had the ability to go, gee whiz, what will I do? You know, now I've got all of these options because I um, busted my butt and got the ATAR that gave me the options. So it, 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 that was, um, it, it's always good to, to go home and it recharges me to, um, just to have that little bit of extra encouragement. Uh, community here is important as well. Um, and I've, it's only the last couple of years I've gotten a bit of a community in Sydney with um, cousins who have come to study after I did and uh, other young friends who are in similar fields and we've got a bit of a feeling of community here now so that and that's taken me years. I'm in Sydney, I've been living in Sydney um, for most of the time since I graduated in 2008. At the moment I work for a non-profit called Career Trackers and what we do is we work with Indigenous University students to create internship opportunities in the private sector. So one of the big um, principles that I try and see through with my work at the moment is that our second year students and our third year students, we have all of these sort of funny networking events where we teach them kind of little tricks about being in the corporate world. And it, one of the, um, and we were always making sure that students are spending time with one another and so that they can see, well, hang on, that guy's a, a 12 months ahead of me and, and they don't seem that, you know, that much clever or that much more brilliant than me, so maybe I can get there. That, the community between, um, between the students that I work with at the moment is, um, I make sure I, I push for that with all of them. There's a lot of opportunity to teach Aboriginal art in the curriculum and I think that in the past there's been a bit of a disjointed um, way of doing it and we've all, we're all familiar with the Clifford Possum emu footprint handout and you know make a story based on these prints and let's study the artists that are from uh, Western Australia or the Northern Territory but what I found in my couple of years of teaching in high schools is that kids are much more open to learning about Aboriginal art if you take the process and teach that to them. So rather than saying here's a key like a legend to a map and now we're going to get you to tell a story in the same way this artist who's obviously like that's those are his symbols from his culture it's not going to make sense to um, to every student. So I had a little bit of success with getting students to understand the the process so that that the the Aboriginal artwork that we are looking at is about a particular experience or a trip from here to there or it's about the land from the top down and you know 
using that visual language, using the same principles that the Aboriginal artist is using uh, and creating an artwork that's about your own experience and your view of the world rather than just using it like a key or a legend. Students get this weird, um, when you take the mystery away from it, when you, uh, there's the, all this taboo around, wow, it's dots, and, and when you can actually have a conversation about what the artist is trying to do, what the meaning is behind it, it demystifies it for non-Indigenous students that were expecting it to be part of this, I don't know, taboo sort of thing that they weren't ever going to get access to knowing about. Kofa's definitely known in the world of art teachers. I don't think I, I've taught in a few different schools, a lot of casual and temporary things and everywhere you go, oh you're from Kofa. So it's, and a lot of the, um, a lot of the positions in the really good schools around Sydney, they're, they're Kofa grads. So it's definitely a place that's got a, a really, um, a, a, got a good reputation behind it. What I find most interesting is when you can get somebody who's not part of the art world to get it and that's really cool. So I've got a younger cousin who was doing his year 12 area of study and the, the topic was belonging. And he had to have an additional text, and like something that he knew about to write about in his exam. And uh, it's always the same, and the markers get sick of it because it's the same thing, that students use the same extra material every time. But I thought I might try and shake him up and do something a little bit different. So he was in Sydney on a trip and I took him to the Art Gallery of New South Wales to see Lynn Onus's Fruit Bats. And we had a really big conversation about belonging to, uh, in, uh, uh, belonging to Indigenous culture, but also having uh, a connection to his non-Indigenous heritage. And, um, and we had a lot of conversation around that. And that was one moment where I can go, he, for my younger cousin, the exposure to an artwork and what you can understand through engaging with artwork is what made him get a, get a concept in a more sophisticated way than all of the texts he's read in, he'd read in his English class was going to allow him to do. So I think that's, um, that's one of my nice sort of moments where I've gone, yes, having the capacity to engage with art and use it as a, as a learning tool um, is definitely a life choice that I'm really pleased that I went down. I think that'll be difficult for a long time for even well-meaning teachers yeah. to interpret yeah. how to teach, how, how to involve Indigenous content across their curriculums, even the ones that just mean, mean so well because it's, we are still a long way away from a good understanding that Aboriginal people in Australia are all very different to one another. There's not uh, there's not a simple, and we all we both know that there's not a. I think that's still that's going to be a barrier for teachers for a while yet. Yeah, yes. Because there's not an easy way to deliver the deliver a curriculum about Aboriginal Australia because you've got to accommodate for different different customs, different ways of doing things, yeah. different beliefs across different yeah. Aboriginal nations. Yeah. The earlier the the student realises it's a helpful idea, I think is important. Uh, with high school students and then that inspiration to come to university. It's so much about working out where you want to go. So it, it, trying to work with students to, to just to work out what it is they want to be uh, and then you tailor whatever study it is to that because just selling this idea of oh go to university, get a degree, get a good job, that's not enough anymore. It's got to be a path that suits you and university just happens to be part of it. Um, it. It's not as simple anymore as, you know, go to university, become a policeman or go to university, become a teacher. It's not just this degree equals this job. It's not that straightforward anymore. So I think what's imperative with young people is that we, that whatever we're doing in schools and even at uni when we're working out which path to take at uni, um, it has to be about the end goal, where it is you want to be and then tailoring the pathway 